Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak about load lines. Load lines play a very important role in basic uh, stability based calculations. Load lines and draft marks, in fact, they help us to understand whether the vessel is loaded safely as far as the stability is concerned, strength is concerned. We do load line survey, we uh, do draft surveys and uh, we find out the quantity of cargo on board. Load lines is a legal requirement, it is a mandatory uh, requirement for a ship you know, to comply with the load line regulations. There are certain ships which are accepted and there are certain ships which are exempted. We must understand what is the difference. Accepted means the load line convention does not apply to those ships. Now accepted ships uh, you have the ships less than 24 meters in length, less than 150 in gross tonnage, ships of war, the uh, pleasure yachts which are not uh, trading vessels and the fishing vessels. In the category of accepted ships, there are also these ships which are solely plying in Great Lakes, St. Lawrence, Caspian Sea, River Plate, River Parana and Uruguay, the parts of Uruguay, uh, etc. Now let's talk about the exemption. Ships when engaged in international voyages between two ports of two or more countries, as long as the ports are fixed and the trade is fixed, they might be exempted from certain provisions of load line convention. Exemption also is extended to some ships which are of the noble type and uh, they might be making international voyages, but following the provisions of load line convention might hamper into their research work. Now we talked about the accepted ships, we talked about the exempted ships. Now let us also talk about the importance of this load line disc. Well, earlier the ships used to be called floating coffins because they were over insured and uh, the ship owner did not care whether the ship survived floats or uh, sinks because he would get his money. Ships used to be overloaded. So Samuel Plimsoll was a revolutionary politician come, you know, social worker kind of person. He lived from 1824 to 1898, you know, because of his efforts, practically in 1870, you know, these kind of ships were eliminated. So in 1867, Samuel Plimsoll was elected as member of parliament for Derby. In 1873, a royal commission was set up. In 1875, the bill was put up in parliament. And because of the popularity of the concept, the bill was forced to come in act, uh, to come in force. And subsequently in the next year, the regulations found place in much a tripping act. So that was the history of this load line, you know. Now coming back to the technicality of this load line mark, you know, the surveyors or the classification society would decide where to put the disc. It is placed amidships. So here's a disc. The uh, thickness of the circle is 25 mm. Right? And this is the center of the disc. Where you have the center of the disc, you would draw a line. The length of this line is 450 millimeters. Right? The thickness is 25 mm. This represents the summer load line level. So basically the upper part of this line is the summer load line level. Now how do you get the position of summer load line with respect to the deck line? If you assume that here you have the deck line, of course. The length is 300 millimeters, thickness is 25 mm and the upper line, upper level of this deck line represents the level of the deck. Okay, now the distance from here to here is the summer freeboard. Now summer freeboard is assigned to the ship. The process is called assignment of freeboard. You know, when the ship comes uh, uh, from the yards, you know, it is assumed that it is assumed that the ship does not have a uh, superstructure. So, depending on what is the length of the ship, depending on whether the ship is type A or type B, that means a liquid carrier or 
otherwise the ship is assigned the tabular freeboard. Now tabular freeboard is picked up from the tables depending on the length of the vessel. Right? Now various corrections are applied to this tabular freeboard. For example, uh, the ideal block coefficient is 0.68. If your block coefficient is more than 0.68, it means that for a given length when the ship gets damaged, you will sink more. So you will be given penalty. And similarly, there are uh, various other factors. For example, L by D ratio should be at least 15. If it is less than 15, that means the ship is not uh, uh, safe as far as you know damage stability is concerned. If L by D is less than 15, that means you don't have enough reserve points in case a compartment gets damaged. Similarly, um, the corrections are applied for you know the position of superstructure, the existence of superstructure, then uh, the bow height, the minimum bow height, the shear, etc. Uh, we are not talking about that. What you will be given is the minimum freeboard, the assigned freeboard that is called the summer freeboard. Now, suppose we are looking at the starboard side of the ship, the forward of this load line disc, at a distance of 540 millimeters. You uh, have this. Uh, you have this vertical line, okay, and in line with summer. Once again, 25 mm thick, uh, the 230 millimeters. You have summer load line. Whatever is the summer draft of the ship, that means from here to the keel. Uh, summer draft divided by 48. So suppose the summer draft is 9.6, 9.6 divided by 48 is 20 centimeter. 20 centimeter above the S, you have the tropical and delta by uh, summer draft by 48, that is 20 centimeter below the S, you have the winter load line. So you have winter load line, summer load line and tropical load line. Tropical, summer and winter, they refer to the same density. It's not that the densities are different, so levels are different. No, it is the weather. You can say stormy weather, uh, uh, medium weather and the fair weather. We will uh, study about these uh, lines in slight more details. But at the moment, just understand that the uh, uh, vertical distance between these lines Vertical distance between these lines is summer draft by 48, right? And then uh, when we talk about the density, when we talk about the density, here's a line that is called freshwater line. And from the upper part of this line till the upper part of summer load line, this distance is called freshwater allowance. And freshwater allowance we have seen in my previous class is displacement upon 4 TPC freshwater allowance is in millimeters and then you have one more line over here that is called tropical freshwater so from tropical freshwater to tropical this distance is once again freshwater allowance so these are the normal load lines which are painted on all the ships now talking about the timber load lines now let's talk about the timber load line or lumber load line. Timber load line applies to the ships which are uh, constructed, which have infrastructure, which are loaded with timber as required by the timber core. So approximately from the break of oxen till the aftermost hatch, they are loaded at least to the required height and breadth wise, they are loaded appropriately so that the timber load line could apply to those ships. So uh, it's not that you load you have loaded a couple of slings of timber on deck and you can apply timber or the ship is a timber carrying ship but there is no timber loaded on deck you won't apply the timber load lines so what happens is when you have loaded timber on the deck you know it gives uh, some kind of uh, uh, safety as is given by the superstructure there are good and bad points when you load timber on deck what happens is the moisture you know the dry timber the wrongly declared weights of timber, they cause some concern in the stability calculation. Then the liquid that comes on deck remains on deck for some time, you know, 
uh, uh, it will give rise to free surface effect. Any liquid that comes on deck and is able to uh, influence the center of gravity from going to port or starboard would cause free surface effect. Right? So uh, you have sometimes the dried timber which takes the water, it takes the moisture and uh, the ship tends to become top heavy. You know, uh, That is another concern and sometimes the timber weights are wrongly declared. So these are the uh, challenges which you have on the timber vessel. But at the same time, it is like a quasi superstructure. That means partially it is acting like a superstructure, which helps in uh, improving the stability of the vessel. Like in a way, it increases the freeboard of the vessel. It dissuades the waves from uh, boarding the vessel. So uh, that is the reason you would be assigned a, a timber summer load line. So first of all, let us draw this vertical line. Once again, 25 millimeter and let us say you have the timber load line over here, which would be assigned once again, uh, the dimensions are similar, 25 mm, 230 mm. You have number tropical here and you have lumbar winter over here. Now this distance is summer draft divided by 48 whereas this distance is summer draft divided by 36. And by the similar principle you have this lumbar fresh water and lumber tropical fresh water. <clears throat> now this represents the fresh water allowance. This also represents the fresh water allowance. Now in case the vessel is less than 100 meters in length, you have a winter North Atlantic and this line is 50 millimeters below the winter load line. If we have to put the winter north Atlantic for the timber that is lumber winter north Atlantic the level is same as winter north Atlantic here right. So uh, these are the load lines which are marked on the ship. Now one of the practical applications of these load lines which must be uh, understood by a marina is like uh, let's take an example a chief officer is told by the master like uh, we are going to uh, load the cargo say in Mumbai and uh, we are going to proceed this is the month this is the time and uh, this is the area these are the ports we are going to go like uh, how much is the maximum cargo we can load we have to load the maximum cargo we have to give the figure to the charters now Depending on what is the bunker requirement, depending on what is the water requirement, whether the ship has got fresh water generator on board, whether uh, there is a bunker porch in between, what is the uh, sequence of the various zones, whether it is a tropical zone now and summer zone later and uh, the winter zone later or this is a winter zone now and we are going to enter a summer zone. Depending on all these uh, 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 conditions chief officer would decide how much cargo uh, the ship can take how much cargo the ship would uh, be able to take so that whenever wherever you are crossing a zone like say uh, when you are crossing a, a zone from tropical to summer you know as if there is an inspector uh, at uh, the separation you know he is going to check your load line he is going to check your draft whether you are overloaded because legally you would be considered as unseaworthy, you are not permitted to overload the vessel. The ship would be considered as unsafe vessel, unseaworthy vessel. So considering the various factors like what is your bunker consumption, what is your freshwater consumption, what is your minimum requirement, what kind of weather you are going to go through, you know, and what are the bunker ports in between what is the uh, present uh, ROV of bunkers and freshwater, you know. 
if you are loading in tropical zone and subsequently you are going to go to uh, summer zone and then winter zone practically practically uh, in most of the cases I would not say in all the cases most of the cases 99% of the cases when you have uh, loaded in such a way that when you enter the winter zone you do not submerge the winter load line that criteria that particular condition will decide how much cargo you can load in the tropical zone so before I conclude, I must tell you that these various load lines like tropical, summer and winters, they are not according to the density of water, they are according to the weather conditions. Like for example, summer zone means the regions where not more than 10% of the wind speed exceeds the force 8 of Beaufort scale, that is 34 knots. Tropical zones are regions where not more than 1% of the wind speed exceeds the uh, scale 8 of before that is 34 knots and not more than one tropical storm in a 10 year period occurs in an area of 5 degrees latitude longitude square in any one separate calendar month and naturally winter zones are all the other regions so I hope I have covered load lines from various angles and in future as the course goes or as is appropriate we will do the various calculations to understand you know the actual importance of load lines and application of load lines in our stability calculations